Breaking news. Is this a well thought out plan to destroy someone who bravely comes forth exposing corruption? He had many obstacles in his path but just like David versus Goliath the giant, he continued to fight for Americans' freedom. He had autism and brittle diabetes but his strength of defining right from wrong made him push forward to inform other Americans what all he was learning each day. He brought out into the open important things which the rich and powerful wanted to keep hidden while they chopped away at Americans' freedoms daily. We watched his constant struggles as he learned to put together professional websites self-educating himself. We watched his daily battles to keep these websites up and running as someone tried to bring them down. Then one day he got an email telling him that he was being sued by right of and for copyright infringement of a TSA photo. He was being sued for $250,000 plus they wanted him to travel from North Carolina to Colorado. This is someone who is living off of one SSI disability check. He had no extra money to fight this type of battle. He got a call where this company was willing to settle out of court for $6,000. He informed the lawyer calling that he was only receiving $700 a month checks he told the man calling that this was all the money he had to live off of the entire year. The lawyer coldly told him that they would take a certain amount of this money out of his check until the $6,000 was paid. Brian went public with all of this while others were secretly paying a certain amount to this lawyer. It was cheaper to pay this than to obtain an attorney to fight it. Brian was blessed that an attorney came forth and was willing to help. It became public record that Brian had autism, brittle diabetes and was living off of a SSI disability check. His website USWGO was put back on after right of and dropped the lawsuit after reporters without borders and others got involved in the battle of freedom of speech. Brian's website became even more popular after this, getting over 1,000 hits per day. His website continued to get attacked. Most people would have given up, but not this soldier who decided to continue to bring out in the open things that were hidden in the night and fought to keep his website up. David continued to battle the giant. Then in August, 2012 there was a police raid on his house. Even though his entire focus was to bring out in the open things hidden in the dark, important things that concerns all of our freedoms in the USA which was now under more attacks. The policeman who led this raid who knew personally that Brian David was fighting corruption said that child porn was being downloaded from this house. This police raid involved several police from a small town in NC, and it took them at least three hours to go through Brian's small house while Brian and his family waited on the front porch with two armed policemen watching the family as though they were all criminals. The next day Brian's family convinced Brian to remove his website as the danger was now clear. They were using child porn accusations to bring him down, keep him from bringing out in the daylight corruption done in the dark. Copyright lawsuits did not work. Thinking one is into child porn would really turn everyone against this person. How do you prove you are innocent of such charges? What a wonderful way to stop alternative news and keep people silent. Brian had never touched any child, was not interested in children. Was really interested in exposing corruption, but suddenly he had to also learn to remain silent. The police removed all laptops from the house took all hard drives out of desktop computers all USB cards, memory sticks and many CDs were removed. All of Brian's personal vacation photos were seized as well as all of his political findings under the looking for child porn search warrant. The next day after the police raid where all of Brian's computers were seized and everything in his house was ransacked for hours, Brian refused to go back into his house again and stayed in Virginia. Brian remained free for over a year. But he wanted his photos back, all of the memories of his entire life and vacation photos were taken from him, and he was no longer doing any political writings under the USWGO name. Finally 14 months after the raid, he paid an attorney $75 to write a letter to the police station that came and got all of his computer items to return these to him as it has been over a year, and he was never charged with a crime. The chief of police at Modern. NC wrote back that his items would not be returned because there was a secret investigation. Then in December, Brian received a call from a detective from the town of Modern, NC that he could now come and pick up his items as this town was not bringing charges against Brian. He could pick these up on December 13, 2013 at 10 a.m. 
Brian ended up going to the hospital in Martinsville, VA on December 12, 2013. His grandpa called the police station the next day to tell the detective that Brian would not be able to pick his things up that day because he was in the hospital. The detective then informed Brian's grandpa that was okay because the town did not have his things now anyway and there was a federal warrant out for his arrest, and someone from the Department of Homeland Security would be coming to Virginia to arrest Brian. He informed Brian's grandpa that lying to a federal employee is a federal offense. Brian's family contacted the Virginia police to see if there was a warrant out for Brian's arrest and was told that there was nothing in any state. Brian continued to be in the hospital, and a few days after they were told there was no warrant, someone called the house and said he was from the Department of Homeland Security, and Brian needed to come to NC to be arrested and if he had to he would come to Virginia and start kicking in doors, even the hospital doors to get Brian. Again family contacted the Henry County, VA Sheriff's Department to see if there was a warrant out for Brian's arrest and was told there was none. On Friday, December 20th, the nurse from the hospital called Brian's mom and informed her that someone from the Department of Homeland Security came and arrested Brian there at the hospital. Family found out that they supposedly found one image of someone under the age of 12 on one of Brian's computers, and that is why he was arrested. Apparently if one image is found on your computer, this is considered a felony. Why is ICE and the Department of Homeland Security involved with all of this? Brian is a U.S. citizen born in Florida with a genuine, certified birth certificate to prove this. Does this have anything to do with Brian's interest in political matters and rights of U.S. citizens and writing articles about these subjects for over three years, like New World Order, Agenda 21 and NDAA because of the right of and copyright lawsuit, it became public knowledge that Brian had a professional-looking website, USWGO that he had done himself, that Brian had autism brittle diabetes and was living off of a monthly disability check. Why did it take this long to arrest Brian? Was it because Brian had obtained an attorney to return the items taken from his house which totaled over $2,000? Usually when one is robbed, one calls the police. Police took these items, so now who would one call? Instead of having these items returned, Brian got a deceiving call from the police. If Brian had not been in the hospital, he would have gone to Maudan with the prospect of having his memories returned, instead he would have been arrested right in front of his family. However, this traumatic event was saved for a week later, weekend before Christmas and done in front of hospital staff. The nurse who called Brian's mother told her that she gave Brian's insulin to the one who arrested Brian and a list of his medications. The Maudan, NC detective knew about Brian's arrest warrant yet sheriff's departments in Virginia could not find this information. Brian was taken to the jail and Winston-Salem and spent the weekend in this jail. His family was not allowed to visit him, however, they did take a list of his health issues, medicines and professionals' addresses and phone numbers who had and were working with Brian and gave this to the receptionist to give to the nurse. Brian has so many health issues that he has a Medicaid waiver in VA giving him 33 hours of paid assistance each week. There was a hearing in Greensboro, NC on Monday morning. After Brian blurted out that he was not allowed insulin in jail and other horror things done to him there, he was escorted out of the courtroom and told he could no longer talk to his family, and his family were told that they could not talk to anyone in that room. The U.S. Marshal was given a copy of what to expect from someone with autism during time in jail from Brian's family. Brian was taken to the Guilford County Jail at Greensboro, N.C. after this hearing. Family learned what needs to be done to purchase pay telephone with this, you put money in first, and when the person from jail calls the family, it costs $1.10 per minute. Brian called family on Christmas Eve and told them he was not being given insulin at Greensboro either and was trying to walk in his cell and trying not to eat much food to try to bring his glucose down. He told his family that they were trying to kill him by not giving him his insulin. Family and friends became suspicious as to why he was arrested the weekend of Christmas when it would be hard to get help. Denying a brittle diabetic insulin could easily kill that person. This was not one but two jails in North Carolina denying him life-saving insulin. The hospital nurse in Martinsville, 
Virginia said she gave insulin to the arresting officer for Brian. Family took a copy of all of his medical history, list of medicines and all medical contacts working with Brian to the Forsyth County Jail in Winston-Salem, N.C. Someone told family to fax some medical history to the jail in Greensboro, N.C. Family did that along with what his current insulin needs are. Apparently, Brian is not being given his other medicines either. Family did receive a call from the courts the day before Christmas and two calls the day after Christmas. They want for Brian to be returned to his home under these conditions, have a third-party custodian. They want for Brian to be placed under the Adam Walsh sex offender specific conditions. He will be required to be put under electronic monitoring, have no computers in his house, no phones in his house, not be around anyone under the age of 18. He will not be allowed to go outside to walk. The only time he will be allowed out of his house is for doctor's visits. Not only will he be a prisoner in the house but any family member caring for him would be too. They fail to tell you that if you have a felon record and this is considered a felon, you lose your disability SSI check, Brian's only source of income, and right to food stamps. Family told the one calling that the only way he will be able to come home is if these charges are dismissed or he is proven innocent beyond the shadow of a doubt. Until the time he needs the care of a hospital-type setting, not home and not a jail where his medical conditions are not addressed at all. If you want to shut someone up, take away their freedom of speech and constitutional rights. Just say you found child porn on their computer, then take away all forms of communication, such as computers, phones, money, food, right to walk outdoors, put on tracking devices, threaten them with years in prison, use the family who love them to keep them at home. They used computer tax on the website, copyright lawsuit. Both failed. Now child police raids on private homes, confiscation of all computers and then saying they found child porn, and all of our freedoms as U.S. citizens are gone. Here is a news release about the situation on December 26, getting out in the open what some want to keep hidden in the dark. Brian D. Hill, is being denied all of his insulin in Greensboro jail. Brian Hill is a 23-year-old autistic man that was removed from Martinsville Memorial Hospital in Virginia and taken into custody by Homeland Security on December 20. He is a brittle type 1 diabetic that is only being given two insulin shots per day compared to the four shots per day that he would take at home. He told his family that he was being denied insulin at a hearing on December 23 at Greensboro Federal Courthouse. The family faxed the details of Brian's insulin regimen to the Greensboro jail and within an hour a doctor at the jail called to tell his mother that Brian is receiving two shots per day at breakfast and at supper. At home, Brian takes a short-acting insulin for all three meals per day and another long-acting insulin once per day. He is not receiving all of the insulin that he needs at this time. The doctor told the mom that they can't follow the insulin regimen that Brian told them that he does at home and therefore they would need to get in touch with his doctor. To date, we have not heard anything about him getting in touch with Brian's doctor and no one has called the family to get more information. Today the mother talked to her son and found out that Brian's blood sugar was over 500 mg yesterday and that today he is feeling very sick and nauseous. This blood glucose level is considered to be critical hyperglycemic. He is in danger of having ketones which can cause him to start losing weight, vomiting, fainting and possibly go into a diabetic coma. This is a very dangerous situation and it can possibly lead to death. This is what a nurse told us on Brian David Hill's Facebook support page, I believe they will try to keep him from a diabetic coma, from lack of insulin. But not following his schedule for insulin and even eating jail food is not a good idea with a brittle diabetic and can cause kidney problems and blood circulating problems but God only knows the emotional abuse they are giving him. His civil rights have been violated to the fullest extent.